for democracy and peace that women can represent. In an interview this morning, Yemeni activist Tawakul Kaman said her prize is a victory for Yemen and for all of the uprisings of the Arab Spring. Kaman is the 32-year-old journalist and head of the Yemeni NGO Women Journalists Without Chains. She was detained for a time during the unrest. This is of a clip of her speaking just after her release from prison in January. We will continue our struggle until this regime goes from our happy country. We will defend our country. The Jasmine Revolution continues until this regime goes. Tawakul Karman is the first Arab woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize and is believed to be the youngest winner of the Peace Prize to date, slightly edging out the Irish activist Mayreed McCorrigan, who won in 1976. Both were 32. For Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the award comes as she wraps up her re-election campaign. Voters in Liberia head to the polls Tuesday. Lehman Bowie's Women for Peace movement is credited by some for bringing an end to the civil war in 2003. The movement started humbly in 2002, when Bowie organized a group of women to sing and pray for an end to the fighting in a fish market. She's the subject of an award-winning documentary film, Pray the Devil Back to Hell. The trio of laureates follow only a dozen other women among 85 men, as well as a number of organizations to have won the Peace Prize over its 110-year history. To talk more about this year's Nobel Peace Prize, we're joined by two guests. In a moment, we'll be going to Amira Woods, co-director of Foreign Policy and Focus at the Institute for Foreign uh, for Policy Studies in Washington, D.C., originally from Liberia. And with us from uh, Britain is the British journalist Iona Craig, who's been closely following the uprising in Yemen. Um, let us start uh, with the Yemeni winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, Tawakul Karman. Iona Craig, tell us who she is. Um, well, I first met Tawakul last year when she was then a thorn in the side of the government, working as a human rights act activist and the president of um, Women Journalists Without Chains. She has always been a very outspoken character, fighting for the rights of press freedom um, and for political prisoners in Yemen. Um, so this prize is an acknowledgement of that, as well as her, her leading role in Yemen's unrest since January. Talk about her history. Talk about her significance and the significance of a woman in Yemen winning. As you say, it's particularly significant as a woman. She's very outspoken. She's led demonstrations um, even in, in years gone by, leading up to the time of, of Yemen's unrest, which began in January. Um, and she has, has inspired a lot of women as a result. Um, she has fought very hard for press freedom in Yemen. Um, and she has also fought, as I said before, for political prisoners um, and for, for journalism in general within the country. Um, she is a very forceful female, and uh, many women have followed in her footsteps as a result now over the last seven months and have really found their voice and now want to be part of, of a new Yemen, part of this new democratic process. Um, they don't want to be forgotten. Um, as this hopefully transition happens in the months months ahead. Talk talk about her organization, uh, women journalists breaking the chains. Yeah, this was um, also a, a, an a, a NGO that she set up, um, not just to fight for the for the rights of women, um, but also for press freedom in Yemen. Um, a press, um, have, the press in Yemen have a huge amount of restrictions imposed on them, particularly Yemen journalists. I met her initially um, at the trial of a Yemeni journalist, Abdullah Haider Shea, who was then sentenced to five years in prison, um, supposedly for connections to, to al-Qaeda. Um, he, he had at the time um, pinpointed um, U.S. involvement in drone strikes um, in Yemen. Um, and it appeared at the time that he was perhaps being punished for that. He has since been, as I say, sentenced for five years, and she was fighting very hard um, for him and on his behalf to try and get him released. There are many uh, prisoners in, in Yemen who are often taken from their houses without any representation from lawyers or without any contact from their family. And these political prisoners she has sought to fight for um, since 2005, when she founded this organization, um, to try and get representation for them and for, for, for them to, be, to uh, receive a fair trial in Yemen. 
So she's been organising demonstrations outside the parliament in Sana'a um, on a weekly basis for many years now. How much of a threat does Salah consider her, and what will this mean? How much of a boost will this give the opposition movement in Yemen, um, for both Yemen and the Saudi regime that is supporting uh, Salah's return and the Salah regime in Yemen? Um, I think it'll be a huge boost for them. As she said um, in her interviews today, this is an award that um, she dedicates to the Yemeni youth movement and to all Yemenis and to all youth across the Arab world. Um, Yemenis, particularly the, the activists in, in Sana'a and in Tyres, feel that they haven't received the recognition for their peaceful demonstrations that have now been going on for, for the best part of nine months. So there were, I've spoken to many of them in Sana'a today, and they're certainly celebrating this award, and they see it as a recognition for their peaceful efforts um, as activists, as a group, as well as for as recognising Tawakal herself. Um, certainly, the regime did see her as a threat. This was why she was arrested in January. Um, but her arrest sparked further protests. Um, and I think they quickly realised that it was better for them to, to release her than to, than to detain her, which would have, have, have caused further problems. I think, if anything, this, this Nobel Peace Prize will actually, um, in some ways, may go towards protecting her. Now she will become an even greater international figure. And certainly, if the, if the regime sought to, sought to detain her again, um, I think that they would create a huge problem for themselves. But certainly, it's a great day for, for the movement in Yemen, um, as they see it. And what does this say for the men of Yemen? What does it mean in a very much male-dominated culture? Um, they've, they have largely, um, although there have been some divisions in the movement about her role, um, accepted her as this leading figure, and a lot of women as well. As I mentioned before, a lot of women have now come forward and are speaking out, have been um, speaking to large crowds of, of male demonstrators. But it's also encouraged the women to come out on the street as, um, at the same time. There have been thousands of women that have, have come out to demonstrate on a regular basis now on, on the streets as a result of her, her presence. Um, so, yes, the, the men are, are, are equally inspired by her activity um, and have also been largely willing to, to accept her role. Uh, Iona, would, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Um, I think the demonstration that will be taking place in New York at 4 o'clock at 47th and 1st outside the United Nations of Yemenis will be uh, take on a new significance, uh, Yemenis against the Salah regime right now. Uh, Iona Craig speaking to us from London, usually based uh, in Sana'a, Yemen. She was last there in August. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace.